a pleasure sabbat brethren we thank god for giving us uh, this wonderful sabbath being the last hours just before the lord's supper oh what a wonderful time the lord's supper is god is ordained because today is really the 14th day of abib but at even today we begin the lord's supper and we even thank god for giving us these wonderful lessons that we have been enjoying throughout the whole day that is uh, prepared us for this time for the Lord's Supper. We are all encouraged to be ready and make ourselves ready for this feast that God has ordained. Uh, at this present time, uh, I will call you into our topic today, even as we approach the, the, the Lord's Supper. Uh, the topic that we want to hear today is, are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? So that's the topic that we have. Are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? Because we are talking about the Lord's Supper, that is in front of us. The question is, are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? Mm -hmm. Now, our first reading, uh, of course, will, will direct it to the book of Daniel, where we get some interesting reading there, uh, written by A.T. Jones, uh, that is March uh, 372, 1899, June 13. Uh -huh. Can you read it for us? There are two additional views of the books of Daniel and Revelation uh -huh. that I think ought to be given before the start is closed. Right. One thought, uh -huh. which, though not directly a particular subject, right. but on the subject, uh -huh. is the wrong use so often made of that expression mm -hmm. of the 12th chapter of Daniel. Right. Men shall run to and fro, right. and knowledge shall be increased. So you see, when we talk about this time, when uh, we are ask, asking such a question, are we worthy to, to ordain the Lord's Supper? What it really means is we are, must be living in a time when there is advanced knowledge. We have heard people when they comment on Daniel chapter 12 verse 4, uh, they say people shall run to and fro. Mm -hmm. And we comment much referring to the technology that is in the world. In the world. So here Wakona is bringing forth some point and saying there is a wrong use that has been done in, this, what, in these chapters. Let's see what is the wrong use. <laughs> I hope we shall get around right. some of these days to where we shall use that in its true meaning, uh -huh. and not always in the false meaning. Right, so there is a false meaning of Daniel chapter 2, verse 4, saying people knowledge shall increase, people shall run to and fro. Mm. What is that false way? Uh -huh. Although people may travel mm -hmm. in luxurious ease and with great rapidity, right. from country to country, uh -huh. and from place to place, uh -huh. and thereby increase their knowledge, right. yet most of the knowledge that is increased it's by that knowledge. means is not knowledge, knowledge at, at all. all. <laughs> so when you talk of people, like I can today, I can talk uh, while I can fly, and I'm now in in the UK, uh, mm. or I can fly, I'm now in what, in America, within hours. And as I'm traveling to and fro, traveling, meeting different cultures, different people, it have different setups, different environment, people claim that this person has increased in what, in knowledge. But inspiration is coming in and saying, what usually people are getting as they are running to and fro throughout the world, is not really what, knowledge. Mm. Uh -huh. Let's see but the scripture by that means is not knowledge at all. Mm -hmm. But um, but the scripture does not mean that uh -huh. anyhow. So the scripture is not referring to that, the knowledge of the world where you are running to and fro, this and that. What is it referring to? Uh -huh. It simply says, they shall thoroughly search, uh -huh. of course, the book which is under consideration. And by that means, knowledge shall be increased. Do you see what is happening here? Mm. It's not that people are going to search the world and search what. What is what is it that they, they are going to search the book that is under consideration? Mm. It is the book of Daniel. Eh? So when people are searching and learning this book of Daniel, what is really happening? Knowledge will be increased. It means this book gives us what is proper, true knowledge. Eh? Mm. Maybe let us hear more the timing in which we shall have this. Uh, it says there, Brother Wakona, eh? Brother Hawkona has, I think, 13 different translations of that clause. Right. Will you read some of them, uh -huh. Brother Hawkona? So there are 13 different <laughs> translations of that verse of Daniel chapter uh, 4, is, uh, uh, 12 verse 4. Mm -hmm. So we want to hear one of them that is quite interesting as in, is in relation with what we are learning today. Let's hear uh, one. Let's hear what we are reading. Uh -huh. This is... Uh -huh. Using the Vulcan rendering. Uh -huh. Seal the book until the appointed time. Right. 
literally the statute time. Mm. Men shall go through it, and <laughs> signs shall be multiplied. I don't. I, I thought you would say, I'm in place, I'm in in place. In. because that is quite clear. Yeah. What is actually saying? Seal the book of Daniel until the statute time. Mm. You see, brethren. So it, it is at the time of the statute time when we can really understand the book of Daniel, and Amen. we can really understand a proper science proper knowledge and we can even have a clearer understanding of when whether to ordain the Lord's Supper and what happened to Lord's Supper mm. and even proper science can be increased. So mm. we wait for a statute time. Amen. So not at any other time. This is why you see uh, among Advent people only the book of Daniel t tended to be understood when people uh, in 1888, in 1844, they started to talk about the statutes. Yeah? Mm -hmm. When they started to talk about the Day of Atonement, uh, it's 22 October 1844. That's when they started to understand. Otherwise, people were not understanding what was involved. Mm -hmm. uh, so when we now bring forth the statute, then it is then that we understand the books of Daniel and Revelations. Amen. So those who say the statutes were nailed to the cross, they have nailed also their understanding and their appointed time in which the books of Daniel must be revealed. Mm. No wonder why the, 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 the midnight cry which explained clearly about the Day of Atonement was able to tell the people that 20 October was the Day of Atonement. Why? Because it went back to the statute time. Mm. The statute that is written. Without the statutes, you cannot uns you can you cannot unseal the prophecies of what that has been given in the scriptures. Uh -huh. Now, then this this is why then we can read of John when he was writing even the book of Revelation. What did he say? Uh -huh. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. Right. He says uh -huh. the very Sabbath which was instituted in in Eden. Uh -huh. He was keeping the Sabbath, <laughs> for God had created only one Sabbath, right. and that was to last through eternal So ages. what we are talking about is, even the very book of Daniel, of Revelation, when given to John, it was not just given at any time, but it was given on a statute day. Okay. He says, I was, it was on the Lord. Stay. Mm -hmm. Which law stay was it? It was a Sabbath. And we know the Sabbath in Leviticus 23 is a holy convocation. It will term it as a, as a statute. Mm -hmm. So this is what is quite clear before us, brethren. Even before you can even think of reading the book of Daniel, think of reading the book of, of Revelation. The question that you have is, is it the statute time? So when it is the statute time, we must be clearly understanding the books of Daniel and the books of Revelations, for they are sealed or they are closed until the statute what time. So this is during the time of the statute time, that's where we are having what we refer to as the proper knowledge. The knowledge that enables us to really understand who we are, what God expects us to do, because we know according to Isaiah chapter 11, the knowledge of the Lord should cover the whole earth. That says Isaiah 11 verse, uh, verse 9, that this knowledge of God should cover the whole earth. So this knowledge is increased at the statute time. This is why we have the angel of Revelation 18, when it says the angel of Revelation says, touches down upon the earth, and the earth is lightened with the God's glory. What is this God's glory? It is this knowledge. Why with this angel? Because this angel comes down at a statute time and provides the statutes to the people of God. And hence, the, 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 the knowledge is increased according to what? To Daniel. Oh. And the books of Daniel and the books of Revelations are made quite clear to the people of what? Of God. Mm -hmm. So let us hear more about this, the, the, this true knowledge that... It, is in relation to the statutes. Uh, we will read uh, P.U.R. January 28, 1909. Uh -huh. The grand truths of sacred uh -huh. history possess amazing strength and beauty uh -huh. and are as far reaching as eternity. Right? No science is equal to the science that reveals the character of God. Do you see that, brethren? So when we say wait until the statute time, mm. what is important at the time of the statute time? We have a knowledge that is far exceeding all sciences. Amen. Because why? It reveals the character of God. Mm. So the statutes 
This is why we say the statutes have to do with our love for who? For God. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they reveal more about the character of what? Of God. God. Mm -hmm. How God is worshipped. How God is like. So, all these the statutes do reveal. Mm -hmm. So, when you say we have knowledge, we ask you, the knowledge that we are talking about, does it reveal the character of God? Mm -hmm. If you tell us knowledge, the summation of this, the mathematical formulas, the integration, all this, that, all you can ever talk about, we say, okay, we understand that, but that's not proper knowledge in reference to what we are talking about. Because proper knowledge, which engages even the knowledge, the, 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 the sight of the angels, mm -hmm. is a knowledge that reveals the character of God. So it's the Lord's Supper which we are starting even today. <laughs> Let's see which exactly are these laws that were given to, 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 to the sacred history that reveal the character of God. <laughs> Moses. Moses was educated in all the wisdom of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Yet he said, right. Behold, uh -huh. I have taught you statutes and judgments, uh -huh. even as the Lord my God commanded me, right. that he should do so in the land uh -huh. Which is God possesses. It is said that Moses possessed, he had so much knowledge of the what of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. But what is interesting with Moses, he says, Behold, I've told you what? The statutes. Yeah, he is exalting the laws of what? The statute of God. Amen. So that when brethren we have the statute, then we have the knowledge. Amen. And this is what Daniel has said. Close the book, seal it until the statute time. Because the statute time, that's when the earth must be lightened with the glory of God. Mm. So, quite interesting. Let's hear more. Go down and say, uh -huh. Where shall we find? Where shall we find laws more noble, mm -hmm. pure, mm -hmm. and just than are exhibited on the statute books right. that record the instruction given to Moses for the children of Israel? It's a question. If you want. Look for your own place and your country where you can think you can find the pure laws just as they are exhibited in the statute book recorded by Moses. Mm. So we have a statute book, brethren, which has got pure laws, noble and just, which cannot even be compared to any other nation. Mm -hmm. That's when someone stands up and says, those, no, those laws were nailed at the cross. Why could not you nail the, 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 the laws of the nations? Because even the laws of the nations, they don't even come close to the, what is written on the statute what book. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's see what it says. Through all time, right. these laws are to be perpetuated uh -huh. that the character of God's people may be formed after the divine similitude. Don't tell us that these things were nailed to the cross because we are told that through what? All time, these laws or these statutes, mm. which are in the statute book, mm. they are to be perpetuated. Mm. So those who say, no, 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 this were nailed to the cross, we ask them, inspiration say, these must be perpetuated. Mm. Don't tell us, what are you talking about Passover? What are you talking about uh, New Moon? What are you talking about? This one? No, 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 no. These must be perpetuated. Uh -huh. Amen. Let's go ahead. The law is a war of protection to those who are obedient to God's precepts. Yes. We live in the time when there is COVID, when there is difficulties, when this and this and that. But what we have as a wall of protection? Hmm. The statutes. Amen. We have covid it can come, it can attack you, but still we have a wall of protection. You will go through through his what his power. Uh -huh. From what other source can we gather such strength or mm. learn such noble science? There is no other way you can learn noble science if you refuse the statute. So this is why when the statute time came, even knowledge in reference to the, the to, to the making up of, of planes and everything has increased. Why? Because it is increasing in reference to the statute time. Mm. So that the people of God can keep the statutes. Any other thing that has nothing to do with the statutes of God, God is not concerned about it. It doesn't increase it in terms of what knowledge. Communication has increased. You think it has increased for war? You think it has increased for gossip? No, because of the statute time, so that the statutes may be communicated to us, so that we may know what God will have us do at this particular time. Uh -huh. What other book could teach men to love, right? fear, and obey God as does the Bible? Uh -huh. What other book represents to students more enabling science, more wonderful history? So we have been spoken about this, then the question may be asked, what then? Where then can we find the statutes? Mm. Because we've said this statute book contains noble ideas, noble law of God, which should be perpetuated all time. Then the question is, where can we find the statute what book? Mm. PHTV 2, 119, paragraph 3. At the close of it's the book itself, the book of Leviticus. Uh -huh. 
at the close of the book itself, right? Hebrews 12:46, verse 46, uh-huh. and of the chapter which, for want of a better name, mm-hmm. we have termed its appendix, uh-huh. uh, we find expression indicating the purpose of the whole, uh-huh. and that the book of Leviticus right. forms in itself a special and independent part of the Pentateuch. Right, Pentateuch meaning the five books that were written about mm-hmm. Moses. Uh-huh. We repeat. We repeat it. Uh-huh. The book of Leviticus right. is intended for Israel as the people of God. Right. It is the statute book uh-huh. of Israel's spiritual life. Right. And on both these grounds, uh-huh. it is neither simply legal uh-huh. in the sense of ordinary law, right. nor yet merely ceremonial, ceremonial. Uh-huh. but throughout symbolical and typical. So we have made it clear what exactly is it that we are saying close the book of time until the statute time. Mm. What is the statute time? Where do you find the statute? Book of Leviticus. Mm. So the book of Leviticus is a statute book. And where exactly in the book of, of Leviticus where do we find statutes? Leviticus chapter 23. Mm. And this is why we've explained it. In 22 October 1844, it was a statute found there in Leviticus 23, which they were able to unseal the book of Daniel. Even now we are able to unravel and clear everything because of that book. Amen. Because of that statute book. You would say that statute book was never at the cross. God is saying that book is for spiritual Israel. Mm. So if you say we are spiritual Israel, then do you have the statute book? Come the Lord's Supper now we are talking about. Are you there with the statute book? Mm. Are you in line with the statute book? Come the camp meeting. Are you in line with the statute book? Mm. Are you keeping what the statute book is saying? So the issue is on the statute book, brethren. So are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? The statute book must tell us the requirements for us to be worthy to do so. <laughs> now, let's go ahead. What I say, and accordingly, it's deeper truths. Uh-huh. Accordingly, right? It's deeper truths apply to all times uh-huh. and to all men. <laughs> That's what is interesting. Mm. And accordingly, it's deeper truths of the statute book. Mm. They apply to who? At all, all time. times <laughs> and to all men. Hmm. Now, let us make something quite clear about what we refer to as a statute. There is something very important about what is called a, a statute. Mm-hmm. Let's see what is, what is important about the statute. Can you go to a EMS, American Sentinel, June 19, 1899, page 162? A constitution. Yeah. Uh-huh. A constitution uh-huh. or statute. Right. Do you take note, brethren? A what? A constitution or what? A statute. Remember, we're talking about the statute time. Yes. Uh-huh. Right? A constitution uh-huh. or statute right. is not to be made to mean one thing at one time uh-huh. and another at some subsequent time. Right. When the circumstance may have so changed uh-huh. as perhaps to make different rules uh-huh. in this, uh-huh. in, the, in the case, seem desirable. So let, 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 let us take this thing and make it quite clear. Mm. God is saying here, when you talk of a statute or constitution, mm. the constitution cannot then be, you cannot then say this same constitution is now meaning something other than what it is intended at some other time. Mm. For example, if the constitution, which is a statute, says, 14th day of the first month at even is the Lord's Supper. You cannot say at another time, it means now you, you, you can take the Lord's Supper in time anyhow. Mm. No, you can't do that with a statute. Mm. Or if there is a need now to make that change, then it's better to change the law completely. Mm. So in reference to the Lord's Supper, which is also a statute, or the the Passover, which is a statute, we ask where exactly has it been changed Mm. to say people can now observe it the way they like it. This is what we want to find out. Because we're not talking about a statute, it's fixed. It cannot be changed Mm. to mean something else at a particular time. It really means what God has given at that particular time. So you can't change it and say, today is now, we have thought to change the statute like Jeroboam did. We have thought to change the statute now, it's in the eighth month. Uh, It means, when you do that, that's no longer a statute to God and it's punishable. The owner of the statute is capable of what? Punishing the person because only the giver of the statute can make alterations onto it. Mm. Now, the meaning of the constitution, uh The meaning of the constitution right. or statute uh-huh. is fixed when it is adopted. Uh-huh. And it is not different at any subsequent time when a court has occasion to pass upon it. Mm-hmm. So you don't even sit down as a court and say, no, we thought to change that law. It means this. No, 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 no. That's not how we do with the statute. Once it's given, 
then there should be a procedure of him that who gave the statute is the one who can now do even a complete change. Mm. So what are we saying here? When God has given us the statute, it's clear as it is. So now having said so, and having made it clear that the Lord's Supper is part of the word of the statutes, you will find that when we read uh, in scripture, there was already a confusion and a problem about the word, the timing of keeping this Lord's Supper after the death of what? Of Christ. Mm. That is well after the death of Christ, after the apostles have died. Christians had confusions and battles as to when the Lord's Supper should be what? Kept. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's hear that. Uh, this is why we have the Council of uh, Nice, which took place in 80, what, 35, uh, 325 AD. It was about, again, the issue of the Lord's Supper. So when you say, when should the Lord's Supper be kept? It's not an issue where you can just conclude it overnight and say, this like this. It should be concluded scriptural. Mm. Because it involves the statute of God and it has involved nations battling and fighting over exactly which day should be observed. Mm. <laughs> Why? Because close to it, there is the there the, 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 the is a feast for, for, for worshipping the 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 the, 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 the goddess eh? of Easter. So there is a way of trying to confuse to what this this what these two. So let's just see if that the, the, the problem which existed among the the, 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 the believers uh, well after the cross. Uh -huh. That is the TFCTC. This is uh, written to the Bishop of Laodicea. Uh -huh. The reader. The reader may be curious to know why a controversy should have arisen uh, respecting the proper day for the celebration of the Passover in the Christian church mm. when, when no such celebration had ever been commanded. Right. So there is a, a, an argument here that when you were to check through, you will find that there was a serious conflict mm -hmm. uh, in reference to the day that should be observed as the what? The day for the Passover. Mm -hmm. By Passover in the New Testament, we are simply referring to the Lord's Supper. Because in the New, this is why Paul says in 1 Corinthians 5, with Christ our Passover lamp has been sacrificed. Mm -hmm. So in the New Testament, uh, with the apostles, when they were celebrating, as we shall learn and see, we see that they kept what the Passover. Mm -hmm. But along the way, there was a confusion as to which day the Passover should be what? <laughs> so, kept. So the confusion, this confusion, you will find that it goes from generation to generations. Mm. Right, let's hear more about that one. Uh -huh. The explanation is this. Right. The festival was celebrated solely on the authority of tradition. Uh -huh. And there were in this case two directly conflicting traditions. Right. As is fully shown in the 10th canon of this father. Uh -huh. One part at their tradition from John the Apostle. Right. And held that the Paschal feast should be celebrated every year. Uh -huh. Whenever the 14th day of the moon had come uh -huh. and the lamb was sacrificed by the Jews. Right. But the other part, uh -huh. their tradition from the apostles, uh -huh. Peter and Paul, right. that this festival should not be celebrated on that day, but upon the so-called Lord's Day next following. I'm, I'm, I'm sure you see what really happened. You remember even when Peter and, 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 and Peter and the, the Paul were still alive. alive. Mm -hmm. They worked very hard to make sure there were no divisions. You remember there was the issue of Apollos. Mm -hmm. People were saying, no, I'm, I'm, of, I'm of Apollos. So the others are of what? Of Cephas. They worked very hard to the Corinthians brethren to, to, to clear this up subject. But when they were now dead, Hmm. They came with ravening moves, which we even see nowadays. Hmm. Then they started to say, I am of Peter. Hmm. The other one saying, I am of Paul. Do you see that? We see that they started to say, Paul, it another different day for the what for the Lord's Supper. And the Peter had John it another day for the what for the Lord's Supper. So there was no conflict. The other saying, We're following John, and the other saying, We're following what? Peter. Peter. Hmm. So it's not a small issue when we talk about the Lord's Supper because if in afterwards they were now having conflicts. Eh? Let's hear more about that one. Eh? Go down it says, eh, eh, go down it says, shall we eh, accept? Shall we accept this festival which they offer to us in, on the authority of their apostolic tradition? Uh -huh. As if to teach us the fall of adding tradition to the Bible mm. as a part of our rules of faith. Right. It happens that they are even from the end part of the second century. Uh -huh. 
two directly conflicting traditions right. as to what day should be kept for the person. Uh -huh. And one part had theirs from St. John, uh -huh. and, the, and, and the other had theirs from St. Peter. We can Saint repeat Paul. that, but mm. I'm sure we have seen the conflict that is coming in yeah? mm. about the day when the Lord's Supper should be kept. Mm. And the, 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 the people are dividing between the apostles. Mm. Even great controversy also hears about that uh, aspect. Let's just hear a little about it. GC 685 paragraph 4. Can you take it where it says, of this dispute? Uh -huh. Of this dispute, mm -hmm. of this, the dispute between the Eastern and the Western churches respecting Easter is a strike, striking illustration. Right. Uh -huh. This dispute arose in the second century. So this is what we've been talking about in the second century, eh? when the apostles had all died. Who knew when exactly to keep the Lord's Supper? They had all died. Mm -hmm. Now, they came ravening moves, and then there was this conflict as to when to observe. They said Easter here, but the issue is not Easter here. It's what? Lord's Supper. Because Easter and Lord's Supper are quite different things. Easter is a, is a celebration for the goddess Esther, but it has nothing to do with the biblical things. As we have once talked about it, it has to do with the heathens worshipping the dead. They are mm -hmm. dead what? Goddess. <laughs> Says Moshe, uh -huh. the Christians of this century uh -huh. celebrated anniversary festivals in commemoration of the death and resurrection of Christ. Right. The day which was observed as the anniversary of Christ's death uh -huh. was called the Paschal Day uh -huh. or Passover. Right. So you see, this is what we're talking about. The day that they will celebrate, they call it a Paschal Day or the Passover, mm -hmm. which in our day we call it the Lord's Supper. Because this these who were celebrating here were not Jews, remember, mm -hmm. but they were Christians. Eh? So the Christians are already found in the second century celebrating this feast. But what was the problem? Uh -huh. Let's go ahead. Like the Jews, right? Christians celebrated a sacred feast uh -huh. at which they distributed a Paschal lamb in memory of the Holy Supper. So you, this is what happened. When Christ was here on earth, what did he do? He allowed them to have what the, the, the Paschal what, lamp, which he said, I am the Paschal lamp. Mm -hmm. He gave them bread and what? And mm -hmm. wine. So Christians afterwards continued to celebrate that Paschal lamp and they tempted it, Lord Supper. Amen. Are we there? Mm -hmm. So they tempted it, Lord Supper, or they would call it Passover. That's how they would celebrate. But there was a problem. Hey, what was the problem, right? The Christians of Asia Minor uh -huh. kept this feast on the 14th day of the first Jewish month. Right. When the Jews celebrated their Passover. Uh -huh. And when Christ is said to have eaten the, the Passover lamb, lamb with his with disciples. disciples. So mm. when you go to the Asian Christians, what are we finding out? The, who were following close to Paul. They said, on the very time when Christ ordained the Lord's Supper, mm -hmm. that's when they would eat the Lord's Supper yearly. Mm -hmm. eh? But what happened? Uh -huh. Three days thereafter, right. a festival was observed in honor of the resurrection. Uh -huh. The Western churches, on the other hand, right. celebrated the resurrection of Christ on the Sunday, uh -huh. following the Jewish Passover, right. and observed the Paschal feast on the night preceding Sunday, uh -huh. thus connecting the commemoration of Christ's death with that of his resurrection. You can see that we're now having Asian Christians. Western Christians. Mm. Even today, we, that's what we will also find out. We'll have at the end Asian Christians, Western Christians. What do I mean by that? Mm. Those who are Asians, they've returned back to where the law of God is spoken in Zion and Jerusalem. Mm. So these ones, the Asians, were maintaining. Why would the people who were, li who were coming right from the end of the apostles be so confused that they didn't even know when to partake of the Lord's Supper? Mm. Why was it so? It was because of the ravening wolves. I'm sure we have clearly seen it, brethren. You can read that chapter in GC and you find the argument went on and went on and the others maintained that we will obey what the apostles gave us and the others finally, those of the West finally overcame. And this is what then Ellen White testified to when he was now shown, she was now speaking, mm. pertaining this event of the Lord's Supper. So you can see the conflict of the Lord's Supper is not a, a small conflict. It's a mm. conflict that has taken ages mm. because it comes from the second century. Now we're in the 20th century. Imagine, second century to 20th century is still a problem, the issue of the Lord's Supper, mm. as to when the Lord's Supper should be observed. Mm. So what really caused all this problem? Uh -huh. Let's see what Edmund is saying there in Chisi. 59 paragraph 2, right? 
the scriptural effort, the scriptural ordinance of the Lord's Supper uh-huh. had been supplanted by the idolatrous sacrifice of the Mass. Right. Papa priests uh-huh. tended by their senseless memory uh-huh. to convert the simple bread and wine into the act of blood and blood of Christ. So this is Jesus 59 saying, when the men of sin came into, a play, 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 into the stage of action during the dark ages, or just prior to the dark ages, as we see the 80, 13, 25, because we had a problem starting in the second century. Therefore, in 83, 25, there was a sitting and everything was then resolved in favor of the men of what? Of sin. And what happened? The Lord, the scriptural observance of the Lord's Supper. Take note, what? The scriptural observance of the Lord's Supper mm. was what? Was affected. Mm. So, brethren, <clears throat> the argument is dealing with the scriptural observance of the what? Of the Lord's Supper. Mm. So this is what happened. Because it was d- d- affected by the men of sin during the dark ages. Then we, we are living in this period. We move up to 1798. So from that time on, from the period of the dark ages, we had where the Lord's Supper, we had been what was put, we had mass, or even what we also refer to as Easter. Because Easter is a hidden festival. How come Easter comes in line with the what and decide to be a Christian feast? Why? Because this Easter is conflicting with what? With what? With the Lord's Supper. The, Lord's Supper. Mm. the problem came from the second century. In the days of the apostles, there was no confusion about that. They really knew when to keep the Lord's Supper, as we shall see. So, having, having that problem, Ellen White was then questioned to tell the people and say, tell us. How shall we observe the Lord's Supper? Mm. Now, because the scriptural observance of the Lord's Supper has been removed. So Ellen White is now questioned, tell us, how shall we? Because this problem of the Lord's Supper, remember I said, it's a problem that started from the second century Mm. and has continued even up to the 17th century, 18th century in the days of Ellen White. And the question was still asked here, tell us as to when the Lord's Supper should be kept. Mm. Let's hear what she said. Uh As to the matter of the frequency, early writings, page 302. As to the matter of the frequency with which the ordinances should be observed, uh-huh. some insisted on once, a, uh, on once a year, but the instruction was given that the Lord's Supper should be more frequently practiced. Uh-huh. Today, the church follows the plan of observing the ordinance four times annually. Right. So this is what happened. <laughs> this is why you hear when the church is saying, we are eating the Lord's Supper, this quarter, that quarter, that quarter. They are following this council that came as a result of the argument about the Lord's Supper. Mm. And they are saying, it's a plan. It's not what God ordained. Mm. Because they only told here, the, the Lord's Supper should be frequently practiced. But mm. they are not told that you do it quarterly. They are not told that you are doing this. Because then that came to be their own mind, the human traditions that they have put in there. Now, let's hear more uh, in PAM 170, paragraph 1. Uh-huh. The salvation of men. The salvation of men depends upon a continual application to their hearts of the cleansing blood of Christ. Uh-huh. Therefore, the Lord's Supper was not to be observed only occasionally or yearly, but more frequently than the annual Passover. Right. Uh-huh. This solemn ordinance commemorates mm-hmm. a far greater event mm-hmm. than, the, than the deliverance of the children of Israel from Egypt. Mm-hmm. That deliverance mm-hmm. was typical of the great atonement mm-hmm. which Christ made by the sacrifice of his own life for the final deliverance of his people. So this is where the council is said to have come from. So Ellen White when suddenly brought into this aspect of this confusion that started in the second century, hmm. she simply said, the Lord's Supper should be practiced more frequently. Hmm. But did she tell us how frequently? Did she tell us that you should do it quarterly? Did she tell us that you should do it weekly? Hmm. So she only said it should be practiced more frequently hmm. and more than the annual one, Passover. That's what she was yet said. But now we want to find out what else also she wrote in line with that in terms of scripture? Because here she, that's what she cancelled. But in terms of scripture, the scripture which she revealed, the scriptural observance of the Lord's Supper, what did she say? Mm. Uh-huh. Let's go to LP 196 paragraph 2. At Philip, Paul tried to keep the Passover. Right. 
Only Luke remained with him. Uh -huh. The other members of the company passing on to Tross uh -huh. were awaiting there. Right. The Philippians were the most loving, true-hearted of the apostles' conference, uh -huh. and he enjoyed a peaceful and happy feast with them during the eight days of the feast. So now, scriptural from your own word now, she's saying, how did the apostles keep the Lord's Supper? Mm. They kept it, how I many? Once a, a year, mm. as an eight days feast. Mm -hmm. So the frequency, which maybe she, which now we're talking about, she is coming in and saying, no, they kept it how many days? <coughs> Listen, eight days what? Feast. Feast. Mm. And these are not Jews. These are Christians. That's what she's saying here. They were converts of Christianity. Are we together? Mm. Converts who were Philippians, the Gentiles, and they enjoyed the feast how many days? Eight days of the what? Of the, the, the feast day. So meaning, when you keep the Lord's Supper or the Passover, what followed according to the scripture or setting that she is saying? What follows? The feast of unleavened mm -hmm. bread. Mm -hmm. Come to those who say, no, we are taking the Lord's Supper today four times in a day. Do they have the feast of unleavened bread? Eight days. Mm -hmm. So if they are talking about that frequency four times in a day, we should have how many four, 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 four times in a year? Eight days, feast of even day, uh, four times in a year. And that will be about 32 days of not eating sadza, of eating living. We want to see whether the, the, the zeal will still be binding, which is the heaven today. So, you see, Ellen White is saying the frequency is not, but in another, she is coming out and saying, but the scriptural observance which Paul did was to keep this feast for eight days. Mm. Now, why it? Uh -huh. Receiving the warning of the plot, this is TT. Page 203, paragraph 4. Receiving warning of the plot, Paul decided to go by way of Macedonia. Right. His plan to reach Jerusalem uh -huh. in time for the Passover had to be given up. Right. But he hoped to be there at Pentecost. Uh -huh. He had with him a large sum of money from the Gentile churches. And because of this, he made arrangements for representative brethren from various contributing churches to accompany him. So when Paul kept... The Passover, mm. according to Ellen White, mm. she knew what was coming next was Pentecost. Mm -hmm. So if you say, no, the Passover should be taken four times in a year, then we should also have I mean, four times in a year, four series of Pentecost in a, in mm. a year. And you say these things is not binding. Yeah. So what can we then say? Ellen White is saying here, the, Pas the Lord's Supper should be taken, I mean, more frequently, more than the annual Passover. Mm -hmm. But in another aspect, he's saying, scripturally, how did Paul observe it? It was once a year as an eight days what feast. Mm -hmm. So what, we have these now two conflicting what statements. What does it really mean to us? What does it really mean to us? Because he and she advised and said not annual. But when you go to the scripture, it was done annually. And it is an eight days what feast. Mm -hmm. So this is why then even the fourth angel's message commented and said uh, in one teaching, uh, three paragraph six, uh, uh, paragraph page six point four. Uh -huh. Furthermore, furthermore, no one seems to know when and how to observe the second. That's angel. true because if you say this should not be done, it should be done as an annual. But you go to the scripture and say they did it once, <laughs> then there is now a problem. Eh? Yeah. So it means no one seems to know. According to Ellen White, we can put it there. She did not know as to when the Lord's Supper should be kept. Mm. Because she is, she is saying it's not annually. Yet in another point, she is saying it's what? They kept it annually. Mm. Now, let's go ahead. Uh -huh. Some observe it every Sunday uh -huh. or every Sabbath. Right. Some occasionally. Uh -huh. Some every quarter uh -huh. and so on. So because in that state, no one can be blamed. Mm. There will be not even an argument that we have at the second century if there was no exact date. Mm. Because anyone can say every week, every day. Mm. Because if you say you should practice more frequently without stating the day, how do we know? Every week, every this is what will happen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's here. It seems logical to say yeah. that when God commands us to uh -huh. obtain it anew, uh -huh. he will tell us also how and when to observe it properly. Do you say that, brethren? Because this argument started in the second century, it should only be cleared by who? By God himself. Mm. He must tell us as to how and when to observe the Lord's Supper. Amen. So here's the question today. Are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper among us? Mm. Yes, the Lord told us 
when and how to observe the Lord's Supper. Because when you quote Ellen White and say, no, Ellen White said it should be more frequently practiced. We quote again from Ellen White and say, she said, uh, they kept it as an eight-day feast. Can you align the two? You are not able. So meaning, this is not a subject that can be just be cleared, but it needs God himself to tell us when and how mm. it should be kept. Amen. Now, let us hear the 1888 uh, message which came through Wakona and Jones. What did they say? Uh, because we know that Ellen White was clear about them and said, what these guys are bringing forth, these two angels' messages, was actually the loud cry of the third angel's message. Mm. The message that is to lighten the earth with the God's glory. Meaning, if they were to do that, then they were providing the statute. They were coming at the statute time. Because we have seen that knowledge increases at the statute what? time. Mm. So what did they say about the, the Lord's Supper? Uh -huh. uh, EGWL196, paragraph 1. I saw that duties were laid upon us All right. in God's maybe, word. Sorry, maybe just take this one, the one that I want okay. us to, to take. Uh, let's see. Okay. What did they say? Maybe just take that one and then we we, 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 we see which one again to take. Uh -huh. I saw that duties were laid upon us in God's word mm -hmm. to be performed to keep us humble, and separate from the world, mm -hmm. and from backsliding like the nominal churches. Mm -hmm. Washing feet in the Lord's Supper should be more frequently practiced by us. Mm -hmm. Jesus set us the example and told us to do as he had done to us. Right. So, this is what Eleanor has said, and we also have talked about the 1888 message. What did they say? Uh -huh. This is City, General 1, 1885. This is too plain to be misunderstood. Uh -huh. This is too plain to be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Paul did not depend upon hearsay for his evidence. Right. But received it directly from the Lord himself. So this is what the 1888 message is saying to us. When mm. we talk about the Lord's Supper, we should not talk about hearsay. Mm. We must receive it directly from the Lord himself. Uh -huh. Let's hear. Uh -huh. All that they were to do in remembrance of Christ uh -huh. as showing forth his death till he should come right. was to break and eat bread uh -huh. and drink of the cup uh -huh. And this memorial was instituted after the supper was over. Right. And was entirely distinct from it. Yeah. So it was instituted after the supper was what was over. Mm -hmm. Meaning they are clearly laying it plainly to us when the Lord's Supper was instituted right after eating the Passover what meal. Mm -hmm. So this is quite clear even from them. They are making it uh, quite clear pertaining to the time when these things should what should be the the, 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 the the Lord's Supper should be what should be kept. Mm. So this then brings us to more of what we now want to understand about the fourth angel's message. Mm. Because we know themselves the message that they wanted to bring in 1880 didn't come out clearly because it was rejected. Mm. But now there came the fourth angel's message by the road in 1929. Eh? When that message came, there was still a problem. What was the problem? Lord Supper. Mm. Because it is, we have, I have told you, it's a problem that they started in the second century. And if Illinois they said frequently, it's not the solution. Then people also came to, 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 to what happened and said, tell us when we should keep the Lord Supper. Mm. Now, let us hear uh, about that one. Uh -huh. Can you go to, uh, this is 1 TG 3, paragraph uh, 3.2. Let us see. Uh -huh. Let us see. Just before instituting the ordinance of humility, right. Jesus said to his disciples, uh -huh. You are clean, but not all. Uh -huh. One was not. Right. In spite of the fact that Judas was unworthy, the ordinance could no longer have been put off. Mm -hmm. Albeit, as soon as he had partaken of the sacrament, right. he arose, went out, and did his devilish work. Mm. Afterward, his eyes were opened right. to the crime he had committed, uh -huh. and he hanged himself. Right. The other disciples, though, were as red or as worth for the sacred service as they could have been up to that time. So this is what we are coming out. There's something very clear. When God ordained the Lord's Supper, mm. who was there to, to take the Lord's Supper? It was who? Judas. Mm. But Judas was not clean, as the scripture is saying. Mm. And when he took the Lord's Supper, <clears throat> what did he do? He went and yanked himself. Mm. Or he was confirmed in his, excuse me, in his what? In his sin. Mm. And then what did he do? 
He actually went and what and sought what betrayed Christ. And finally, this is what happened. He hanged himself. Huh? Let's go ahead. The Lord's Supper was ordained. Let me take it again. Uh -huh. The Lord's Supper was ordained in remembrance of the Lord's sacrifice. Uh -huh. Not to clean the partakers of it from their sins, uh -huh. but to cleanse them from the sinners. Right. As seen from the Passover in Egypt mm -hmm. and from the fact that thereafter mm. Judas no longer walked with the disciples. Right. Plainly, then, uh -huh. the celebration of this ordinance brought blessing to the eleven, but, but damnation to, to the one. one. We are approaching the Lord's Supper, brethren. It's a, it's a critical time that you need to question yourself. Mm. Is this Lord's Supper that is coming going to bring to you damnation? Or is it going to bring a separation from you? Mm. Because we are told that the Lord's Supper is not instituted for the cleansing of sins. As some people have taught, you see, when we, well, we talk to the people who are taking the Lord's Supper, they say, yes, we need to take the Lord's Supper for the cleansing of our sins. No, 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 no. The Lord's Supper is not for the cleansing of sins. It's actually for the removal of sinners from the among the people of what? Of God. Mm. So this is what is coming out, out very, very, very clear here, that when the Lord's Supper was ordained by Christ, mm. and even was ordained in Egypt, there was death that was involved in line with that. Those who were not worthy were taken out from among the living congregation. Uh -huh. They have been a number. There have been a number of reform movements mm -hmm. among us before right. and in our time. Uh -huh. Of course, they all attend the Lord's Supper in their midst. Uh -huh. But it did not profit them. Right. It did not make them or their work lasting and eternal. Uh -huh. As a matter of fact, right. they went out of existence <laughs> even faster <laughs> than they, they came in. You have heard many people saying, no, even our also church, our own church also keep the Lord's Supper. Hmm. Even our church also keep the Passover. Hmm. But where have those churches gone? They have gone out of existence faster than they came in. Why? Because when you ordain the Lord's Supper, you put yourself in danger. Hmm. When you are not clean, then you are confirmed in your uncleanliness. Mm. And you, will, you are definitely cut off among the congregation of the living. Mm. This is what even First Corinthians is talking about. So it's a, it's a fearful feast which we are talking about. This is why we are asking a question. Are we worthy to ordain the what? The Lord's Supper. Mm. Because if we ordain the Lord's Supper when we are not worthy, then we are ordaining our termination. Mm. And if again we fail to ordain the Lord's Supper when we are worthy, then again we are putting ourselves in a damnable position. Eh? Mm. So God is saying, the question should be asked, what are the requirements and what makes us to be worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? Because if you do, if you just ordain the Lord's Supper, you will go out of existence sooner than you, you can mm. mm. Now, let's go ahead. Eh? First Corinthians 11, 17 to 18. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now, in this that I declare unto you, I praise you not, right. that ye come together, not for the better, mm -hmm. but for the worse. Uh -huh. For first of all, when you come together in the church, uh -huh. I hear that there be divisions right. among you, uh -huh. and I partly believe it. Uh -huh. The Corinthians were having controversies, causing divisions among themselves. Mm -hmm. And so their getting together in church was not for the better, right. but for the worse. Uh -huh. If we meet together, only for the West. Mm. Is it not far better to stay at home? So this is what was happening even to the Corinthians. They had the Lord's Supper amongst them, eh? mm. which we, we shall see as Paul was saying. But they had a problem. What were they doing? They were causing confusion. So it was better for them to stay at what? At home. Mm. And she, he further says here, Paul, wherefore, whosoever wherefore, uh -huh. whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord mm -hmm. unworthily, right. shall be good of the blood and blood of the Lord. Mm -hmm. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. Mm -hmm. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, eateth and drinketh damnation to himself. So this is it, brethren. When you do take this unworthily, you are doing it to your damnation. Mm -hmm. And even when you ordain it. So this is why it means we have to be very careful and meet the conditions that God has set. Mm. Uh, the Lord's bread and cup are not to be taken. Uh, are to be taken. Uh -huh. The Lord's bread and cup are to be taken by a people only after they have examined themselves mm -hmm. and they have seen to it that they are not causing trouble, mm. that their meeting together is for the better, right? not for the worse. Uh -huh. Now, 
if you have reached that standard of righteousness, mm -hmm. then we should by all means ordain the Lord's Supper among us. Do you see, brethren, we must reach the standard. There is a requirement for us to ordain the Lord's Supper among us. Mm. The Father Jesus message is saying the Lord's Supper should not be ordained. No, he's saying we should meet the standard. When the standard has been met, the standard of righteousness, meaning this is what we are going to find out. What is that standard of righteousness mm. which makes us worthy to ordain the what? The Lord's Supper. Uh -huh. But if we have not come to that point, uh -huh. but if we have not come to that point as yet, right? Then our instituting the ordinance of humility among ourselves uh -huh. would only be to our own damnation, not, not to, to our, our salvation. salvation. <laughs> so, there is a challenge here. When we don't take this thing serious at this stage of time, we really need to know have we met the standard that is required or the standard that is in reference to what is required for us to meet, to keep the word Lord's Supper? Mm -hmm. So you see people, they just run and attend the Lord's Supper among them, but they don't check about the standard. Mm -hmm. And once they do that, then it is for their termination. Mm -hmm. So God is saying, are we worthy to attend the Lord's Supper? The question is, what is the standard of righteousness that we have? Mm -hmm. So this is why God is saying, I have given you statutes and judgments for what purpose? This shall be for your righteousness. Amen. It means when the message of the statute makes Jesus judgments, uh, the, the statutes and judgments come in among the people, then the standard of righteousness is reached. It does not even PP says, God ordained the yearly feast so that he can acknowledge them as holy people before them. Mm. So you find that this standard is a standard that we are approaching, the standard that we need to uh, to meet. Let's hear more as to when and how we we get to this word uh, to this standard. So I'm sure when you see the third message, one, two, three, third message, it is just referred to as a repentance stage mm. where people are saved by grace. You are actually repenting from the world and coming into the truth. Mm. Can we talk about Lord's Supper here? Mm. The standard is far low. This is why Illinois, when people question Illinois, she says, you, you, you don't take it more, 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 than, more, more than once a year frequently. Because why? The standard here, the standard of righteousness is quite low. Mm. Imagine if in the fourth angel's message, refused to attend the Lord's Supper, as we shall see. Why? Because the standard was not yet what? Reached. Mm. So this is not a gambling, brethren. It should be done when the standard of righteousness has been met. Mm. Otherwise, it's for our own termination. So when you say, no, we're going to church to receive the Lord's Supper, be careful that you are going to. This is why many people who want to continue taking the Lord's Supper four times in a year, what do they do? Instead of accepting the proper Lord's Supper which God has given, they reject that and go for four times a year. Four mm -hmm. times a year until they are, they are confirming them in the, themselves in their heart, in their condemnation. Mm -hmm. So that we actually understand this subject. Can you, uh, where, where, what the fourth angel's message actually said about this subject? <laughs> uh, 1 TG 3, 5.1. Our chief duty. Our chief duty right now is not to urge the observance of the Lord's Supper, mm. but rather first to come up to the standard of perfection, mm. which the message of with the message of today, mm. along with the message of yesterday's earth. So what is the what is this angel saying, the fourth angel's message, the road message? He's saying the chief duty of the road message is not to attend the Lord's Supper. Mm. But what is the chief duty? Is to try and pull the people from the message of yesterday mm. and join them with the message of today. Try to raise the standard of righteousness that is required. Mm. Because before we talk of the Lord's Supper, there is a standard of righteousness, brethren, that must be met. Mm. So don't just rush and say, hey, hey we did this. Did this. No, 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 no. If you met the standard of righteousness. Mm. Now, let's go ahead. <laughs> The Lord never calls for revival and reformation right? when the church is enjoying good spiritual life. Because God is saying there must be a revival and reformation that is taking place among the churches. One mm -hmm. may say, no, we are in the good standard of, of righteousness. Then we ask, why then God saying there must be the revival and reformation within our churches? Why is God saying that? Mm -hmm. It's because the church is not enjoying the spiritual health which is supposed to have. And because the church is not doing so, the call then from God is... First, meet that standard. Mm. Now, let's hear more. <laughs> the Lord's Supper, therefore, is never to be obtained at the beginning of such a revival and reformation. Right. But at 
its completion. I thought you get say you say amen. Amen. So when that problem which started in the second century of when exactly the Lord's Supper be kept mm. is only solved by the revival and reformation. But the revival and reformation which was brought by the fourth angel's message in 18 what? 44. Only in, in 1929, the road message, mm -hmm. only caters for the first part of that revival and reformation. Mm -hmm. It was the beginning of the revival and reformation. So when that revival and reformation ends, then what should come to the people of God? The Lord Lord's Supper. Supper. Mm -hmm. So on one living, in a period when that revival and reformation has ended, then we should be talking about keeping of the Lord's Supper. Amen. So we, are, we should be worthy when we come to that word standard. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Jesus did not institute the ordinance at the beginning of his ministry, right? but did so at its close. It's quite clear. Mm. Jesus did not then come in and begin to institute the Lord's Supper in the beginning of his ministry, mm. but he did so at the end of his what? Ministry. Mm. Now, you may ask, the fourth angel's message is compared to which period? Because when Jesus began his ministry, he was working where John was actually what? working. Mm. We want to see where the third angel's message, the fourth angel's message of the rod is placed in reference to this. Uh -huh. Can you take for us uh, the tract healing of the nations, page eight, or this is the uh, one TGR 36 paragraph four, which says, type meets and type. Uh -huh. Type meets and type. Right. John the type. Uh -huh. The voice of one crying in the wilderness. Right. Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Uh -huh. The, uh, the antitype. Right. The Lord's voice crieth unto the city. Mm -hmm. And the men of wisdom shall see thy name. Right. Hear ye the Lord uh -huh. who hath appointed it. Uh -huh. Feed thy people with thy rod. The flock of thine heritage which dwells solitarily in the wood in the midst of Carmel. So when we are to come to where the the Jewish church was mm. in the days of John. This is where the Adventist church is. Mm. When John came, is this is equivalent to the antitype of the coming of the fourth angel's message, which was the road message. Mm. Are we getting it, brethren? Yes. So, road message is in line or it's in the period of who? of John. Mm. So when people were asking Ellen White, this is as good as if they were asking the Jewish priest to say, shall we ordain the Lord's Supper? Because at that particular time, there wasn't any need for the ordination of the Lord's Supper. But what was I need? A revival and reformation, reformation by John. Mm. John himself could not be asked about the Lord's Supper. Why? Because he was at the beginning of that revival and what? Reformation. Reformation. So there is a time when we should now have the Lord's Supper, brethren. Now, let's go ahead. Uh -huh. True. Verse 3, Isaiah 40, uh -huh. found fulfillment in the work of John the Baptist. Right. But the verses preceding and also the verses following mm -hmm. definitely apply to the people in the later days. Right. And only partial to the people in John's day. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the truth stands out boldly that the direct fulfillment of this chapter is found in our time. Right. Thus, making John's work an ensemble for our work, mm -hmm. John's work the type, ours the anti. So the road message has made it quite clear, no confusion. So we don't expect the Lord's Supper in the days of what? Of John. Mm. Because it is the beginning of the revival and reformation. Mm. When should we expect it? At the close of that revival and reformation. reformation. We want to hear something from Ellen White when she was talking about uh, the, the, the Lord's Supper, how and why the Lord's Supper is, is linked to the close of the revival and what and reformation. What is important in that what point? Mm -hmm. uh, this that I'm reading is CCH 295, paragraph 2. CCH 295, paragraph 2. Is from the top paragraph you can get, but maybe if you can, can't get it, let me just take it now. Eh? It says, The ordinance of baptism and the Lord's Supper are two monumental pillars, one without and the other within the church. Mm. 
Upon these ordinances, Christ has inscribed the name of the true God. Christ has made baptism a sign of entrance into his spiritual kingdom. He has made positive condition which should all comply who wish to be acknowledged under his authority. Father, Son, the Holy Spirit, before men can find a woman in the church, before passing the threshold of God's spiritual kingdom, he is to receive the impress of the divine name, the Lord our righteousness. I don't know if you are getting it. I will take it again. Upon these ordinances, Christ has inscribed the name of the true God. You remember, the name of Jesus the Christ was given to who? To Mary uh, well even before even John was born. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. When they were given that, we are being told clearly why they were given that. It was because the, 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 the Christ was beginning a ministry which was to result in the ordination of the Lord's Supper. Mm. Yeah, which he did at the end of his what? His, his work. Mm. And the name that was carried or inscribed unto that, which he then told the disciples to use after the Lord's Supper. Read John chapter 16, 17, from chapter 12, John chapter 14 up to 17. He would, he would tell you that to his disciples, he's saying to his disciples, you have never prayed in my name. But now you must pray in my what? In my name. Mm. When you attend the Lord's Supper, there was also the ordination of his name in the ministry. Amen. So we know that went on until the second century, which we have talked about it, when it was disturbed. But we are learning that when the Lord's Supper again is being brought to the people of God, there must be an inscription of the name of God. Are we together? Amen. So the inscription of the name of God was not in 1844. Here. Neither was it there in 1929. Hmm. But when is it brought to the people of God? Because when it is brought, then why should we have also the Lord's Supper? Hmm. Because the Lord's Supper must be put, or we have the inscription of the Lord's Supper, or the inscription of the name of God on the Lord's Supper. Why the name of God? Because there is the name of Baal, the name of the man of sin who has been disturbing it, the Lord's Supper, since the second century. So God must put his stamp and say, it is me who have said this. So when we now have that inscription of the name of God, then can we talk about the Lord's Supper among ourselves? Do you see that? This is what Ellen White is saying there. Yes. That when we talk of the Lord's Supper, there must be inscription of the name of what? Of God. Mm. What are we saying? God must testify that I am the one who ordained this. Remember the Lord's Supper and Passover, we say, the, the, or the Feast of Unleavened Bread. This is a statute and can only be altered or be changed and ordained by him who ordained it. Mm. So for us to say who did it, then there must be the inscription of the name. So if you ask us today, are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? We should be able to give you a name and say, because of this name, we are worthy to ordain it. Because we are saying, wherever the Lord's Supper is ordained, there must be the inscription of the name of what? Of God. Amen. Now, let's hear, when is that inscription supposed to be brought to the people of what? Of God. Mm. Uh -huh. 1 Esra 2, 33. 1 Esra 33, right. Israel is spelled. Mm -hmm. Israel is spelled with six letters. Right. Had this name been more or less, it would spoil the picture. Uh -huh. Why? Because the six letters indicate the schist section. Uh -huh. Israel, the true, the hundred forty-four thousand. Right. Are sealed at the close of the fifth section. Uh -huh. Had the name been of seven letters, right. it would denote close of probation uh -huh. instead of beginning of harvest. Right. Israel, in the time of harvest, who receive a new name uh -huh. by the mouth of the Lord. I don't know whether I'm getting that. Yeah. So when we reach what we refer to as the time of harvest, mm. what should we have? A new name. A new name. Mm. When we have a new name, then we are now able to ordain the Lord's yes. Supper. Because the Lord's Supper is ordained under the name of the Lord. Not under the name of a church. Don't talk of the name of the church. You see me? No, we are... Well, this type of a church? No, 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 no. It is ordained under the name of the Lord. The new name. Mm. 
Yeah? So under this period of the new name, the Lord's Supper must be ordained because we now we have the sick net. Mm. Like we have in the kings of Esther, you hear that whenever the law was being put, they, they needed the king's ring to stamp on the law, mm. to say it is the authority of the king, mm. having the king's name. Same thing when we talk of the Lord's Supper, it must have the authority of the Lord. That is, it must have the new name which the mouth of the Lord shall name. Mm. Now, go ahead. Uh -huh. Whatever, whatever, the, uh -huh. whatever the name may be, right. we are sure it will be perfect uh -huh. to finish the picture of preparation time. Do you see that? Because we say it ourselves. We say it, it, say it here. It, it, we say it here. Therefore, the Lord's Supper is not ordained at the beginning of the revival and reformation, but at its what? Close. Completion. Mm -hmm. So it means the name, when we now have the name, the new name of Christ, we are now at the completion of the revival and what? Reformation. And reformation. Mm -hmm. And what should be ordained now amongst us Lord's in line with that? It is the Lord's Supper. Yes, Lord's Supper or Passover, uh, the Feast of Unleavened Bread is termed the Feast of Harvest. Eh? Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is in the time of harvest when the Lord's Supper is ordained among the people of God. Amen. So there must be something special about the new name and about the time of harvest that makes us to be worthy to have said we have met the standard that is necessary to ordain the Lord's Supper among us ourselves. Mm. Now, let us hear what is that name which completes the revival and reformation. Mm. What is that name which the mouth of the Lord shall name? Write 1 T.G. 8, page 24, paragraph 4. Who is to bring this revival and reformation, this great change, mm -hmm. the branch? Right. And according to Isaiah 11, Verse 1 to 5. Mm. The branch is the Lord, mm. the son of David. Do you hear that, brethren? Amen. Who is to bring or to complete this revival and reformation, mm. this great change? Who is he? The branch. The branch. Mm. So when we now hear now, the fifth angel's message is a message of the branch. Mm -hmm. Why is it the message of the branch? Because we are now completing the revival and reformation which was began by the fourth angel's one. It's message. And at this completion, we now have the name of Jesus Christ, eh? who is the branch. According to Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1 to 5, branch is the Lord, the son of David. Quite clear that when we're in the branch period, we now have the name of God. And what should now come into our midst, we're in the harvest time. Because the sick now that we're in the harvest time, we are given a new name. So the new name which came to us in the period of 1955 has given us a privilege and an offer to ordain the Lord's Supper amongst us. And you may ask, we have said we must ordain it. We tell you, the inscription is there. Mm. Where is the inscription? It's not a church. It is who? The branch. Mm. So it is the branch that has ordained this Lord's Supper. So we talk of this Lord's Supper this evening, starting this evening. It means we're in line with the branch. So if you are rejecting this Lord's Supper, we have told you, you are rejecting the inscription of the new name. This is why I say, those who reject the Lord's Supper, who reject this the message of church, they won't receive the, the, the new name. Why? Because the new name is inscribed on the ordinance of the Lord's Supper. That's what Adam might say. Said. Why? Because the Lord has come in and has to tell us how to attend the to keep the Lord's Supper and as when, because we're in the completion of the revival and reformation, right? Uh -huh. And those who are under this movement, what did, what does God call them? Uh -huh. For behold, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Joshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Right. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, says the Lord of hosts, uh -huh. and I will remove the iniquity of the of that land in one day. Right. Uh -huh. Those who sit before Joshua mm. are men wondered at. Right. As such, they are depicted by the stone. Uh -huh. That's the church or kingdom. Right. That is in Joshua's sight. Mm -hmm. It is seven eye perfect vision. Right. When this period. So, do you take note? This church has got how many eyes? Seven eyes. Which is a what? Perfect vision. Mm. Why? Because this church has come in in the statute time. Remember, we said seal these books until the statute what? Time. time. Mm. So when it is the statute time, then the church should have perfect vision because the knowledge is increased. Now, 
When this purification of the church takes place, then sin in the land is quickly removed. Mm. I don't know whether I'm getting this, brethren. This is a requirement for the Lord's Supper to be ordained. Mm. There must be a way of quickly removing sin from the land. So this way, there are two conditions that must be made for the Lord's Supper. The standard of righteousness, which is there must be a special way of removing sin from where? From the land. Mm. Two, there must be a name of the Lord, which we can say, when questioned, why have you ordained the Lord's Supper? We point to the Lord, because it bears that inscription. So the name is there, it is the branch. Mm. But what is the special way that God has ordained that is removing sin from among us, making us meet the standard, mm. which makes us to be able to ordain the Lord's Supper? Let's hear. This is CG, page 501, paragraph 1. Preparation. Preparation for special convocations. So, do you see, when we talk of the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Supper, as we shall see, doesn't go alone. alone. It goes to the Feast of Unleavened Bread. Mm. This evening, we take the Lord's Supper. At the end of the Sabbath, it's the Lord's Supper time, it's the evening of the day we take it. Then, what comes along? Then, the seven days Feast of Unleavened, what? Bread. Mm. Are we moving it clearly, brethren? Yes. So, there must be a preparation for these special convocations. Mm. So, before you can say, now I'm attending the Lord's Supper, we ask, do you have the preparation? Mm. If you do not have the preparation, then that's not possible for me and you to attend the Lord's Supper. Mm. Let's hear what is the preparation. Here is a work. Here is a work for families to engage in before coming up to our whole convocations. Mm -hmm. Let the preparation for eating and dressing be a secondary matter. Mm -hmm. But let deep heart searching commence at all. I don't know what they were getting into. Before. before you even... Because God was merciful to us to just allow us to keep the Sabbath. Mm. Otherwise, God would also have said, don't ordain the Sabbath now. Mm. But he was merciful to just allow us and in mess. This is why I say you ordain the, the Sabbath in the time for the, for, for the righteousness by grace. Mm. Because... When you really want to keep the supper, there must be a preparation for me and you to keep it holy. Mm. For a holy God will not accept. You know, when you are when you are a sinner, you have stolen, you have done ever since which you have, and you are singing and saying, "Where's our foot? is coming again." Do you think there is something that is separating your voice from your sin? Mm. When you say "Where's our foot," it means your voice is going again with your sin because sin is there in you. Mm. So even your worship, the worship of sinful beings is not acceptable to God unless there is a means of making it possible. So this is the, the means of making it possible is the very means that we are saying, this is why we are saying, when we come to the Lord's Supper or to, the, to, to ordain it, there must be already that special way of making me and you ready. Are you getting it? So that special way we are being told here is the one that comments at warm. And it is called what? Deep heart searching. searching. Mm -hmm. And how is it done? Uh -huh. Pray three times a day. Right. And like Jacob, be importunate. I don't know whether I'm getting it. Mm -hmm. It's not a yearly thing. It's a daily thing. Mm -hmm. So we need to first have what before we can talk of, of Lord Supper or even of the Sabbath. We need to have the daily service. Mm. Of praying three times in a what? In mm. a year. Mm. In, a, in a day. So these three times in a day, what are they doing to us? They are making us to do the heart searching that is necessary. When we have that heart searching, we are meeting the standard of righteousness that makes us worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper. This is what has come along with the angel, the fifth angel's message. A special way where three times in a day we are before God. And what are we doing uh, before God? Uh -huh. At home right. is the place to find Jesus. Uh -huh. Then take him with you to the meeting. You see, brethren, if you lose Jesus at the third hour, at the sixth hour, at the ninth hour, which we always talk about, which has been spoken time and again, at third hour we take bread and wine, sixth hour we pray, ninth hour we take bread and wine for the forgiveness of our sins. If you cannot find Jesus there, don't think that you find him at church. Yeah. So, you must find Jesus at home. Mm -hmm. Then me and you, are we able to attend the 
Zero supper. Because we now have a standard, we now have a way of removing sin in the land. Now, I, I'm sure this is quite clear. This is why we, when you get to PP352, what does it say? The daily service. Uh -huh. The daily service consisted of the morning and evening burnt offerings. Right. So, daily service consisted of what? Morning and evening burnt offerings. Uh -huh. The offering of sweet incense on the golden altar. Right. And the special offerings for individual sins. I don't know whether you hear why, why was the daily service there. Mm. It was special sins for individual sins. Mm. You hear, even among that when people, they tell you, uh, if you th if you think you are not worthy to take the Lord's Supper, don't take it, eh? You ask them, then, how do I make myself worthy? They have no answer. How do you make yourself worthy? They have no answer. Mm. So it means, this is why we say, under the third angel's message, under the fourth angel's message, it's not possible to observe the Lord's Supper. Whatever you're observing is not the Lord's Supper. It's something else. Mm. Because the Lord's Supper, as it is observed, there should be a way of saying, if you examine yourself individually at home, mm. three times in a day, and see that you are not worthy, you take bread and wine to transfer your sins into the heavenly sanctuary. Then you have made yourself worthy to partake of the Lord's Supper. So that is a requirement for us to meet the standard of righteousness. What should we have? The daily service. Mm. It says here, they were also, take note that one, they were also, and there were also offerings for Sabbath, right? new moons, and special feasts. So you can't talk of the Sabbath without the daily. Mm. You can talk, you can talk of the Lord's Supper without the daily. Mm. Neither can you talk of even any other feast or any time when you can meet God without the daily. Because you can, we cannot worship God with our sins. Mm. We must have a service to take away our sins. We you examine yourself, I examine myself. I see where I'm not worthy. Then I confess. And then there is a service to take away those, what, those sins. This is why Christ said, before they would take the service, what did he say? You are all clean. Eh? Mm. Meaning, there must be a way of first cleansing the people so that they can have a part with the Lord's Supper. Mm. So, a way has been ordained among us, which is the daily communion. Mm. And is being interceded by Christ and Holy Ghost under the new name, the branch. Amen. So, you may ask, are you worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper? We say, the Lord has made us worthy. Why? We have a service which will not examine ourselves. We see ourselves are not worthy. We confess the unworthiness before God and is forgiven. Eh? So quite clear is God bringing this subject before us. Even if when you read the point which say the feast of the sanctuary, you will find that the feast of the sanctuary that we have, uh, this is the page, uh, Lord's Supper, page 3, uh, 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 which says here, well, the first feast of the sanctuary that we have was morning and evening. And mm -hmm. then afterwards we have the seven day supper, which is for the week. Eh? Then we have the new moons, and then we can have the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. So you don't just rush and say, hey, now we've attended our Lord's Supper, and we ask, do you understand the new moon? You don't even understand the new moon. Do you understand the daily commune? You don't even understand the daily commune. Then we just tell you that you have attended the Lord's Supper to your termination. Because why? You don't have a service that cleanses you. Or that makes you to be clean. Remember, it was a requirement, as I said, to say, Jesus said, you are all clean now. Mm -hmm. It was his mercy that through that feet washing, he allowed them to get the cleansing. But in our time, that feet washing, if you read in this page, he said it was, it was showing, it, it was a symbol of the higher cleansing. What is the higher cleansing? It is this bread and wine at the third hour and the ninth hours of the day. So if one neglects the third hour and ninth hour of the day, you are not good enough for the Lord's Supper. Mm -hmm. You are not ready. You are not prepared for that whole convocation. Mm -hmm. So this is it, brethren. Uh, this is why we find that even if we were to read, uh, this is Numbers 2. Can you see what it says? On the 15th day of the seventh month, that's Numbers 2. Mm -hmm. Just down there. After that paragraph. Okay. You see PP 352. One says, on the fifteenth day of okay. the seventh month. Yes. Uh -huh. And on the fifteenth day of the seventh month, 
who shall have a whole convocation. Right. Who shall do Nesafa work. Uh -huh. And he shall keep a feast unto the Lord seven days. Right. The daily, uh -huh. beside the continual burnt offering. Uh -huh. Beside the continual burnt offering. Um, okay, I, I wanted you to understand that one. Uh -huh. What it's saying, when you were to read even the feast of God, it will say you have to do this sacrifice beside the daily continual. Meaning, the first prerequisite is the what? Read it in Numbers 29. It will tell you that you have to do sacrifice like this beside the daily. You on the supper, there are two things beside the daily. Mm -hmm. Why? Because the daily is the core in all these feasts. If one is to keep the feast, what can make me worthy to worship God? It is the daily. Mm -hmm. So that's it on that point. And this is why even the rot then rot. Uh -huh. This is symbolic code, volume 12, number 6, page 12. The Lord's Supper. The Lord's Supper being one of the solemn feasts. Right. It will be celebrated next in the time mm -hmm. when the wicked are no more to pass through the church. You see that? So that's what you wrote. When the Lord's Supper is celebrated, then the wicked should no more pass through the what? The church. Mm -hmm. So the branch period or the harvest period ensures that the wicked are actually eliminated. How are they eliminated? Mm -hmm. If you don't take bread and wine, you don't confess your sin, then... You are being eliminated even by the Lord's Supper itself. Mm. Because you, whenever you are now eating it, it's for your own termination. Mm. So what is removing all the wicked among us and all wickedness even among us? The daily service that God has ordained. Mm. So we have met the standards. What are the standards? The standard of righteousness? We have the daily, mm -hmm. which makes us worthy. The inscription of the name of God should be there. We have the name, the branch. Amen. So we are more than worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper. Mm. Because we don't ordain it, the branch ordains it and places the inscription of his name. If one is to challenge and say, which is this one? We say, this is neither West or East conflicts which were in the second century, but it is the branch himself. Mm. He has provided us with the service of the daily. He has provided us with his name so that we are able to do so. So then the question then that comes to us now, which we now have, will be when and how should we observe the Lord's Supper? Mm -hmm. Are we getting it? Mm -hmm. Because we have seen that when it is observed at any point or any time, then there is damnation to that person. So when and how? Now, let us hear from the call to Lord's Supper, page one. Let's hear how the Lord's Supper was ordained. Uh -huh. Can you go? Can you see it? Yeah. It was with yes. It was with great. It was with great joy and solemn awe that a large group of believers, right, from the four corners of the nation uh -huh. and Canada, uh -huh. assembled at Mount Carmel uh -huh. to celebrate the Passover, right, on the fourteenth day of our baby. That is that was April Christine, right. Uh -huh. For men, uh -huh. it was their first time to right. celebrate it properly uh -huh. and at the right time. At the right time. Mm. And so we now know what is the right time which God has ordained. Mm. On the 14th day of the first month at even. Mm. So today is the 14th day. And now as the even ends, we are on the 14th day of, first, 14th day of the first month at even. Therefore, we are in right lines to eat the Lord's Supper. Amen. You may ask for the authority. The authority is the branch now. Mm. Yeah? You may ask for the service that has made us ready. The daily communion. Mm. So we are, we, we, we are on course, brethren. God is calling us to be on course. I'm sure we have used the daily communion so that it has prepared us to partake of this sacrament that God has given. Can you go down? No, it says also, therefore, let us keep the feast within the same paragraph. Mm -hmm. Therefore, let us keep the feast uh -huh. as it is as it is ordained anew. you. Right. Just as Christ ordained it in his day. Uh -huh. Hence, follow our Savior's example of observing the Lord's Supper at Passover time. So this is what we do. We don't follow anyone mm -hmm. who are following the, our Savior's what? Example. Mm -hmm. He ordained it on the 14th day of the first month at what? At mm -hmm. even. Mm -hmm. And he has told us now under his new name that this is the time to ordain the Lord's Supper mm -hmm. on the 14th day of the first month at evening. So are those who are observing it quarterly, who are observing it at noon, who are doing all this, they have no authority of the 
name of God. Mm. Neither can they have a service that has prepared them for that. Now, can you also go down and say, uh, and say on the Sunday morning, the wave sheaf was offered? Eh? On Sunday morning, the wave sheaf was offered according to the instruction in the scriptures. Mm -hmm. On the morrow after the Sabbath, the priest shall wave it. So do you see, brethren, quite clear the subject mm -hmm. that not only do we ordain the Lord's Supper, the Lord's Supper comes along with the service of the wave sheaf ministry. Mm -hmm. Not only does it come, it even also comes the feast of unleavened bread. So from today, this evening, as we, the, the sun sets, uh, what are we actually having? We are having seven days feast of unleavened what? Bread. bread. Mm. For us to keep Lord's Supper. As Ellen White wrote that, this is what Paul did. Observe the Lord's Supper and it was followed by eight days feast of un unleavened bread. Unleavened bread. Mm. The only let's hear go the alteration that God has given in terms of the time because we've said when the statute cannot be altered. We want to hear what the alteration that God only allowed for those who failed to keep the Passover. <laughs> right? It is our uh, can you go down call to page two again, call to supper. It is our prayer that those it is our prayer that those of you who were unable to attend the first Passover uh -huh. will make every effort to attend the second. So when you miss the Passover, you don't look for another quarter. Mm. Not how eat it in the next quarter. Or how eat it is. No, 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 no. You wait for the second Passover. Mm. And the second Passover should be in line with the name of God, with what God ordained. Let's see what God said. And the Lord spoke unto Moses. And Numbers 9, verse 9 to 11. <laughs> and the Lord spoke unto Moses, right? saying, Speak unto the children of Israel, uh -huh. saying, If any man of you or of your posterity shall be unclean by reason of a dead body, right. or be in a gen afar off, uh -huh. yet he shall keep the Passover unto the Lord. Right. The fourteenth day of the second month, uh -huh. at even they shall keep it. So do you see an alteration from God? Not quarterly, not noon, mm -hmm. not whatever, but only on the second month of the year. This is why we say when the flood came in the days of Noah, it came during the Passover time because it was the second month. Mm -hmm. So the second month is still another Passover time for one who has missed it on the first month. That's the only alteration that God has allowed. Right? Let's see if ever this was done by the children of Israel. Let's see if they ever did this. Uh -huh. uh, this is the uh, Second Chronicles 30. And also. Yes, and also verse 12. Also in Judah, the hand of God was to give them one heart mm -hmm. by the word of the Lord. And they assembled at Jerusalem much people mm -hmm. to keep the feast of unleavened bread right. in the second month, uh -huh. a very great congregation. Mm. Then they killed the Passover on the 14th day mm. of the second month. Right. For there were men in the congregation that were not sanctified. Mm -hmm. For a multitude of people. Do you take note, mm. why did the people not keep the Passover in the first month? They were not sanctified. Mm -hmm. This is what the what have you been said here under the, 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 the this one. When people don't give a way of sanctification, they are not worthy to partake of the what? Lord's Passover. Supper. So this is why we have the daily communion for our sanctification, so that we are able to partake of the Lord's Supper. So this is what happened. Then they observed the Lord's Supper when in the second month. Mm -hmm. So that's what it was. We have an example in the Old Testament. Whenever they failed to keep the Passover, God told them when to keep the Passover in the second month. Mm -hmm. Right. A, now, this is quite, quite clear. We, ca we can say more on that, but it's quite clear. When you miss the first month, God is only given a privilege of observing it in the second month. And you must have missed it for a good reason. There is no other alteration which people dream about and say, for four times, nay, nah, this and that. No, that doesn't bear the inscription of God. You may keep it, but it doesn't bear the inscription of God. That's not the Lord's Supper we're talking about. So what is God saying to us in conclusion today? Uh -huh. Can we go to again to call to uh, Lord's Supper page 5, which says, friends, let us get back. Page 5. Mm. Friends, let's get back to the Bible. Mm -hmm. Follow the spirit of prophets. Yeah. And have the Lord's Supper uh -huh. as a memorial of the same event mm -hmm. of which the Passover had been a time. So God is calling me and you, let's get 
back to the Bible, brethren. Mm. And what should we do? Keep the, the, the Lord's Supper where exactly was the Passover. Mm. So in the New Testament, we have the Passover, our Lord's Supper, but now we no longer kill the lambs. What we take, well, is this evening we'll be taking what? Bread and wine. Mm. So God is quite clear in calling us to the standard of the scriptures. Uh -huh. Go ahead. Refrain from longer observing the Lord's Supper in the daytime. God is calling you, refrain from observing the Lord's Supper in daytime. Mm. For that is called a luncheon. Mm. Right? Uh -huh. Eating and drinking with drunkards or traditions. So that's what is to tell me. When you eat it in the noon, you're actually eating and drinking with the drunkards. Mm. And that is a tradition. It's no longer according to scripture. Mm. Uh -huh. Our Jewish brothers... Our Jewish brothers uh -huh. cannot understand the tradition of a Passover lamb eaten <laughs> at noon, right? day several times a year. That's true. If we were to go now even in the land of Israel and ask them, we are eating the Lord's Supper or the Passover, and they see you eating it at noon, and they see you eating it several times in a year, our brethren, they will not understand what type of a Passover it is. Mm. But when they see you on the 14th day of the first month, as we should have gone now to the land of Israel to keep this Lord's Supper, only COVID is coming in place. But otherwise, at this time at noon, we should be actually be at evening, uh, as the sun sets, we should be keeping the Lord's Supper. And our Jewish brethren are also doing the same. And this being said, they, did under, they really understand that, but they don't understand one who keeps the Lord's Supper at what? At noon and several times, anyone? In, in a year. For that is not according to scripture. Neither could what? Go ahead. Hmm. Neither, Neither could, could Moses, Moses or, or Paul or Jesus. or Jesus. They don't understand that. Hmm. So they'll say, no, we're doing it as Jesus. Jesus does not understand anyone who takes supper at noon and several times in a year. No. Because he has come in in these last times and put his inscription on the branch name and told us and given us the communion that we can ordain the supper 14th day of the first month at evening. Therefore, cease from the traditions. Go ahead. Therefore, cease from the traditions of men right. and follow only as that says the Lord. That's an issue. Let's follow as that says the Lord. Mm. Uh -huh. Hear God's voice. Right. And blow ye the trumpet in Zion. Uh -huh. And sound an alarm in my whole mountain. Right. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble. Uh -huh. For the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at end. So this is quite clear to us here, brethren. I'm sure we have seen it that God has spoken to us. Are we worthy to ordain the Lord's Supper amongst us? The answer is clear, yes. Why? Because we have a service for our sanctification, mm -hmm. which is the daily communion, which makes us reach the standard of righteousness. And we also have the inscription of the name of God, mm -hmm. which is saying, which God is saying, I have resolved the conflict that started in the second what? century about when the Lord's Supper should be observed. It's not a conflict of an Advent people. It's a conflict that started well back in the time of it, just prior to the Dark Ages, and it is being resolved by the branch here. Yes, Elijah shall restore all things. May God help us through prayer and give us a blessing even of the Lord's Supper as we partake it of this, uh, this evening and even also to then enjoy the Feast of Unleavened Bread which will go for seven days as we continue to enjoy more lessons and more truths and more sanctification that God will give us. Let's take this Lord's Supper not for our termination but for our own salvation uh, as God has given to us. May God bless the reading of His word. Amen.